Hello YouTubers, welcome back to Yorkshireman 66 I am Mark, your host, your presenter and your entertainment officer for this for this video Now, it is true, I am more entertaining than the BBC, more entertaining than ITV and definitely more entertaining than Channel 4 and Channel 5 and you don't need a licence to watch me so it's definitely cheaper <laughs> So, what am I talking about today? Well, I'm going to talk about the crises you got the fuel crisis and you got the truck driver crisis, which was all started, you know what I mean? Right, so the truck drivers, um, I saw a video what PJ Audits have done. Now, PJ Audits, he goes around different things and, 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 and does industrial estate. He interviewed two working drivers and I were quite impressed um, of why the shortage, I already knew why the shortage is. It's not only the UK what's for you know what's facing wagging driver shortages. Even the rest of you know, even Europe are facing the same dilemma over in Europe. Um and it hasn't only just it, it's just that the media it's anything to bash Brexit, basically. So the wagging shortages has been going for ten, fifteen, twenty years. It's always been a shortage of wagging drivers, always. And it, 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 the media started on on it. Um, they first started off with the fuel. Oh, we've got a fuel crisis in the UK. No, we haven't. We ain't got a fuel crisis. That well, the media. The media got involved. Started pin. You know. You know. Pinning on London. Oh yeah, we've got a fuel crisis. And that, like the toilet roll situation on the first lockdown, caused people to mass panic and buy loads of petrol out of the petrol station. <laughs> Which you fell for it, everyone fell for it. I didn't because I don't have a care, but everyone fell for it, and they started queuing up and things like that. Which I thought were well, there's no fuel crisis. I knew straight away what was going on, it's just the media attempting any excuse to bash Brexit. I knew there were shortage of wagon drivers, I've known it for months, I've known it for years, and this is what happened right now. Now we've got plenty of fuel, we just haven't got they just haven't got enough wagon drivers to deliver it basically. And and that's what it is. And that's why. Um also don't forget the, the you know a lot a lot of wagon drivers, what I know, are like fifty, fifty five and, and and older and when they leave who is going to replace them? Because I don't think the younger generation wants to come into the wagon driving and that and um, you know you can't sell the job. A wagon, being a wagon driver, it is a way of life. It, it, it really is. And it's a very hard job to do. But it's a way of life. And, and a lot of the wagon drivers, who I, like I know, who are my age, that's all they know. It's a way of life. They don't want to work in a factory. They just want to work on the road. And that's what they do. After when they've gone, who knows? I mean, I know, I know personally a wagon driver who's still working at 71 year old. He did retire, but then he went back to drive, um, and he's 71, <laughs> so you tell me, you know, I mean, there's no one else to replace or regenerate the job, and, and I don't think it's attractive to younger drivers, who, who, you know, who may want to consider it as a job, I don't blame them, me personally, there isn't enough, you know, you know you've got big firms like Asda, Wilkinson, and uh, DHL throwing big money out to attract people to go work for them. That's all right doing that. What what should happen? And in my mind, this is what should happen. The wagging shortages is it, it, never going to be resolved for at least ten to fifteen years. <laughs> so it's a, so so it could take two decades to resolve it. But in the meantime. The media just want to keep their mouth shut and let the wagon drivers get on with the job without any of this fuss and all oh, there's this shortage and causing mass panic for public to panic by. This is not the way to do it. Um, Boris says he can fix it. <laughs> hey, there's an article here with him. Oh, oh, uh, by Express. <laughs> right, so. HGV shortage, real reason. No one w wants the jobs, and how Boris can fix it. Well, 
Well, sorry, Boris, but I don't think you can fix it. Even I know that. Boris Rabbit says, cars have been... Boris Johnson has admitted that just 127 fuel deliveries from overseas have applied for temporary visas aimed to tackling HGV driver shortages and the government is offering immediate visas for 300 foreign fuel tank drivers to work in the UK from now until the end of March but an immigration lawyer was said this is not the way to solve the problem as Britain heads into another week without proper access to petrol or diesel. You see what I mean? So the government thing, I, I, you know, I'll give you visas if you come over, you know, foreigners, you know what I mean? Uh, not being funny bullish, but yeah, you know, you know, you know, it's even happening. You know, you know. I'm sorry, Boris, but I don't trust you, mate. I don't trust Boris Johnson. I don't trust this government at all. Um, but the thing is, always, you know, you know, if if nobody wants the job, I mean, they say nobody wants a job in a, in like a factory. <laughs> I've been applying for jobs for months. For years. I've been applying for jobs for a couple of years now. Now that I'm back on my feet, I can I can go back to work. I've been applying to be in a factory or, or, or to work. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. I get the interview. They go through all the motions. I just don't get paid. When I ring up, oh, job's gone. Which it has. It, you know, it's gone to somebody else. And that somebody else might not even have the experience of what I've got. And that's what it is. And that's what's happening. Nobody, you know... <laughs> Yeah, you know, you know, you know, there's firms out there, it, 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 even truck drivers, I'll tell you, they're just box ticking. Um, that's the problem. We need to get back to a proper working society in in in, in UK. You know what I mean? I'm, I mean, I come from a working class family, and this is the longest I've been unemployed, basically. Um, someone says, "Well, why don't you go back to your old job?" Well, I don't want to be a security guard anymore. <laughs> I really don't. Um, I'm, I'm getting I'm getting a bit old for that, you know, and that, and why don't you go back clean? I love to go back cleaning, you know. I love to be a cleaner in a supermarket or a, or a, or a shelf stacker, but just can't get the job. It's not for lack of trying. Like I said, I've had interviews, and that I've even had in, interviews for like other places, and no, they just don't want me because I I haven't done that job before or all like that. But I'm willing. To put me on to any job what I can do and it's as simple as that and this is the trouble with with truck drivers nobody wants the jobs and I don't blame them I, I really don't at the end of the day it, it's not about oh well they're being lazy no I don't think it is the job is not attractive it, it really isn't you're living in a wagon <sighs> long time you, you you will miss out on family life uh, I mean don't forget that away and things like that and then you've got your hours and you might not get back, you have to sleep out, and, and you will miss children growing up and things like that. And and if you, you know, if your favourite sport and you want to go to cup final, well, you might miss that because you could be working. You know what I mean? Thing it, it, it's like that with the truck driver shortage. Um, but it's media driven. It, it really is. The media really, really shouldn't have set up. Um, they wanted it to fear. How can I put it? They blame Brexit for this, and it's nothing to do with Brexit. Like I said, we've been having wagon driving shortages for at least 20 years. As far as I know, I'm, I mean, 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah, you know, it all, that's where it all started. It's, it's just got steadily worse, but we've always had it. It's always been there, shortages and things like that. Um, it's just that nobody wants the job. Nobody is coming in younger, at least 25 to take over and things like that and that's why this is happening and it's the it's down to the it, it is it's down to the media it's down to the bbc and things like that. And it's also down to government trying to throw money at it no good throwing money at it because that won't won't, won't solve it at all what they want to do is listen to the truck drivers give them better working conditions you know in a truck you know especially where they can park up and get a shower and a decent meal at the moment, they haven't got old like that. 
You know what I mean? You know, people argue, oh, well, we've got services. Have you been to a services? Have you been to their toilets? They're disgusting. And the food, is it's just Burger King or okay. KFC. You can't eat that. It's not the right food. And, and you, you get like me, a bit big and fat. Um, they need proper facilities. They, they need, you know, proper facilities. And the government should build these facilities and make sure that, yeah, you know, it's a safe area where truck drivers can park, get a shower and a decent meal and things like that. They have it over in Europe. You have to pay for this over in Europe. But at least they know they can park up in safety and get a decent shower and a decent toilet. That's the thing. So it's it's, it's all the conditions, you know what I mean, down. And it's, it, it is the government's fault at the end of the day. And at the end of the day, the government should be talking to the media and saying, look, you shouldn't be highlighting it. You, you, you shouldn't be making people panic. It's all about fear factor. And obviously people, oh, well, it's Brexit. It's nothing to do with Brexit. This has been happening for years. Like I said, as far back as far as I know, I remember 20 years ago, they were going through similar, but they've got agencies to fill the gap. Nobody wants to be an agency driver anymore. That's why the crisis and um, things like that. So you go from there. But like I said, I will give PJ Audits a shout out on this one. He did a cracking video with a wagon driver and they just basically, he just basically told him, the first wagon driver he interviewed, he basically told him, he says, this is not going to go away in in a decade. It's going to take longer than 10 years for this to get better. So there you go. It's not going to get any better overnight or or anything like that. Yes, you will get your petrol deliveries. It will slowly start to come which I think a lot of petrol stations up here are now reopened and things like that. Down south, there's some more well, well that, I'm, I'm, I'm not bothered about London. Um, but if you're getting that now and you ain't got it before, you're just getting what we got, basically. Yeah, you're getting people panic buying because of the media. Blame the BBC. Blame the media. Go to them and tell them to shut the gobs. You know what I mean? And let them roll it on. It's nothing to do with Brexit. I'm sick and tired of people blaming Brexit for every little mistake. It's not Brexit's fault at the end of the day. This is down to the government and the media. The government have known for years that you know, wagging drivers need a safe area to park the wagon. Uh, they do get told to park in, you know, you, know, you, you, you will still see, see wagon drivers parking in, in, in industrial estates because the firms don't want to pay for services. And you're parking in an industrial estate, you're open to theft, you're open to getting stuff nicked off your wagon and things like that. You know what I mean? I think if I were, um, uh, uh, I think if I were a firm, I would prefer my trucks to be in a services and I think I would have to pay for that. But they need, the government need to build proper facilities for truck drivers. This is what it's all about. You know what I mean? It's a hard life. It is a way of living for a truck driver. It, it really is. Like I say, my stepdad, he, 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 he's driven the wagons and things like that. He knows what, what the crack was. Luckily, he got employed by a private firm called Advance, who did all toilets, deliveries for towels and things like that. He was lucky. That he got in that because he was working from, I think it was from like seven at night. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think he started at six in the morning, right through to about five o'clock, and he came on the same day. And he was lucky to do that, but he was driving a class two wagon, and he he, he really enjoyed that. He, he, he really did. He's paying for it now because he's got rheumatoid arthritis, but he really enjoyed that. But he he, he told me not so long back. He says. I wouldn't want to be a wagon driver now. And I said the same, I said, no, he never would die. You know what I mean? Because the, because of the parking, you know, the conditions where you have to park and things like that. It's all stressful. It's a stressful job. And nobody wants the job. It's as simple as that, but it's, it's down to media. Making, you know, the media need to shut up and let them get on with the job. What they're prepared to do. You know, you can only highlight so much. And Boy Scout fix it. With bringing in foreign drivers, if he thinks he can, he's got no. You've got enough people here to drive, but they're telling you, Boris, they don't want to do it because it's still it's still stressful. You need to listen, and if you don't listen, you're becoming like the Labour Party, 
arrogant, I think is the word for the, for, for the Prime Minister at this moment in time. He's been very arrogant over these problems. I mean, I mean he's not even a leader. We, we're leaderless. We're a one-party nation at the moment and we're leaderless. Because Boris is no leader at, at the end of the day. And at the end of the day, it's Boris and it, and it is mainstream media's fault. Literally, at the end of the day. This is nothing to do with lazy people. Oh, you know, you know, they don't want to work late. No, it's nothing to do with that. It's the conditions, what they're working under. It's a stressful job at the end of the day. I do understand the job. I've, I've known, I, know a lot of, I know a lot of truck drivers who tell me if they could afford to leave, and they would, Obviously, they keep going because they can't really afford to retire, or they don't want to retire. You know what I mean? But when they go, when they eventually stop driving, because eventually they will. But when they go, who's gonna retake the? Who's gonna take over from them? This is the fear. Boris has to make it, make a decision, and he has to be government. I think government sponsored. Facilities for truck drivers, proper facilities, proper, proper truck stops, Boris. This is what we need, and it has to be government sponsored as well. At the end of the day, you need to give back to this country, Boris. You have taken too far, far too much. You have to give back, and by giving back, and by, and by, you know, you want to build your stupid railway line. So why don't you invest in the truck drivers, and invest in government sponsored? structure where they can park up get a shower and a decent meal that's what you want that's what you need to do where they can get proper food so sponsored government truck stops basically that's what we need boris and if you get that right you get the truck drivers coming back into the fold and you must probably get younger drivers wanting to do the job because of the way structure would be better it would be better if you kept it the way it was years ago I mean, you know, I'm, I mean, if you were a truck driver years ago, you were classed as self-employed. That's what they wanted. Now it's all been privatised. You, you, you know, you know. And they're not getting paid a lot of money neither. So that's what it's down to. But there is firms out there who are willing to pay money and, and because that's what they're willing to do. And it depends on what sort of truck driver you are as well. So that's my little talk over for today. So now, so that's the truck driver situation. That's the real reason why we got shortages. The jobs, truck drivers, lack of jobs, basically. There's plenty of jobs, but lack of people who want to do the job. I don't blame them. I really don't, at the end of the day. But like I said, I've applied for jobs um, in, in, in factories and things where they load up the trucks and I can't get a job there. You know, they're not willing to take me on. You know, I think one firm said I was too old, and I said I can have you for that. And I reported it to Job Centre. I don't know if they don't know, but I have reported it. You know what I mean? I'm not that old. I'm not too old to work. I want to work. It's just that nobody will give me a job. This is why I do YouTube on me time, you know, on, on this, you know. This is why I'm doing YouTube. I, I do videos like this to point out the system is, you know, the government, what the government system is doing is wrong. It, it, its priorities is, is, is wrong. I mean, the priorities for this country should be to get people back on the feet and people back into work. He said he'd do it, but it's an election promise broken. You know what I mean? Um, he, he should also think about the homeless as well, um, especially the veterans. He needs to do more for the armed for veterans and the homeless than what he's doing. That's the priorities he should be doing. And also prioritise wagon drivers you know you must build sponsored sponsored government sponsored truck stops basically proper facilities like they have in europe boris that's what you need to do forget this railway line business that's not the priority for this company the priority for this company is to get people back into work stop doing stupid lockdowns get people back into work get them back on the feet so they can pay money and tax and, and so you can rip us all off again and take all the money what you get out of furlough. We all know what's coming and things like that. So that's what that's what you need to do. And then, you know, also you need to build infrastructure for truck driving. It's as simple as that. 
You know what I mean? You can't keep going like you are. You, can't, you know, Boris, you, you, you just take, take, take. You're not giving back. You think you are, but you're not, mate. And at the end of the day, whoever's advising you right now, mate, you know, are all wrong. You know what I mean? You know, like I said, we don't have a leader. Boris is not our leader. He, he wouldn't know how to lead. He's got no leadership skills whatsoever. So I'm sorry, but this is what we stuck with. And because people voted for him, this is what we stuck with. A complete clown in charge. Like I say, if you have liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please like the video. Please share. No, 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 no. Please like the video. Please, please, please subscribe if you're new. Hit the bell icon and hit all. That will let you know when I'm putting up another video. Also, please, when you do, you know, you know, subscribe, watch the video, comment below, keep it within the contents, and then YouTube algorithm won't think that you're a robot and take you away. But please come back from time to time to make sure that you still subscribe to me at the end of the day. Uh, well, oh yeah, please share the video with your friends and your family and Facebook, Instagram and Twitter, uh, which we can do. You know, I mean, there is, you know, there's, there's no law against it, as I can tell you now. Um, it's nothing to do with YouTube. YouTube guidelines say that we're allowed to share to other platforms. If they don't want us to share to other platforms, then they should take away the share button. So there you go. So please enjoy, and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye for now.